I'm holding it. You hold it one way. Uh huh. Oh, nope. Oh, now you broke that it. was it. That's all it had. <laughs> hey guys, we've got a really fun video for you today here on TFL Classics. We've got two generations of Ram 2500 truck, a 94 and a brand new 2020. In this video, we're going to compare them, but I'm going to have Case talk you through his personal truck and talk about how it looks a little similar and also very different than the new one. Here we have my second gen Ram 2500, and this is a brand new 2020 fifth gen Ram. And you can see there are a lot of similarities in their designs. There's some tie-ins there. You can see that there's an evolution, but the newer trucks are just bigger. They're inflated. This hood height is way, way up higher than this big diesel truck. And it's the same all around. Digging into the grill in more detail, there was a lot of people that were upset when Dodge went away from the crosshair grill like, their, or like the 94 Ram has, but you can see that this Ram still has a bit of a cross theme to it because it's indented here and the Ram logo kind of completes this center bar. Now Case did a great job of describing how much taller that new truck is than the old truck in the front end. but. Funny enough, even though that nose is so much taller on the new truck, the actual approach angle is far worse because modern trucks now have a lot of aero design going along the front of the vehicle just to improve fuel economy such as these big front chins. There was no such thing on the old truck, you just got a big chrome steel bumper. First thing you notice when you start driving one of these trucks is just how loud it is. This one in particular has an aftermarket exhaust, so it's even louder. The upside is once you get moving, it makes a pretty incredible noise. Check it out. To be fair, this truck drives like a derailed train. It's it's not very comfortable. It's pretty bouncy with the factory suspension, but those are always things that you can upgrade, and I do plan to. While modern trucks are almost all four-door, this truck was made back in the day when they were mostly used for work. And the biggest cab that you could get on one of these was an extended cab with reverse opening rear doors, and that was it. This new truck has a six foot four inch bed. That old truck has an eight foot bed. However, don't fret. If you want a Ram 2500 with an eight foot bed, you can still spec one out in 2020 in both standard cab and crew cab configurations. The bed on this 1994 Ram, unlike the 2020, was designed to do work. That's why it's got no frills, no fancy tech that's gonna break when you're shoving stuff in here. And that's what makes it great. Let's ignore the fact that that tailgate isn't dampened and actually it doesn't even have a bezel around the handle. The bed on the new truck is far more sophisticated as is the tailgate. First of all, check this out. I can remotely drop the tailgate from the key. It's dampened, it comes down nice and slowly. Of course, bed liners are far more popular now in 2020 than they were way back in the early 90s. This one has a tonneau cover. It also has attachments for a gooseneck. It's got many, many tie down points. And check this out over here. Your wiring pre-installed for a gooseneck. It's pretty sophisticated. Let me know in the comment section below though, which one is better, this new one with all its tech or the old one with scratches and missing bezels and rust. <laughs> These new Ram trucks, especially in the high-end trim levels, are so comfortable. The interiors are so nice and they are so quiet. There really is no better truck for a road trip. Point these in any direction, drive for 1,500, 2,000 miles, and you'll arrive at your destination feeling completely normal. That's how comfortable it is. Compared to the old truck, it's amazing how just car-like these interiors are and how car-like the driving experience is. Manual is a theme on this truck. You have to manually let the tailgate down easy, and similarly with these mirrors, 
you have to manually fold them up like on the new truck, but you also have to manually fold them in. On the newer Ram mirrors, this convex piece of glass is much bigger, and I'm not sure if this is because this is a cheap aftermarket mirror, or if this is how it was from the factory, but this convex piece of glass is not adjustable separate from the main piece of glass, so wherever that's pointed, it's all gotta be the same. Let me know in the comments if that's just because this is aftermarket. But otherwise, they're actually pretty similar to the 2020 trucks mirrors. Let's check them out. Case is spot on actually. The design of the mirror is very similar to the old Ram, but the actual operation of the mirror is very different. First of all, of course, the glass is power adjustable. Then, take a look at this. There are turn signals in the mirror. Then the whole mirror has a power folding function. There's even blind spot monitoring incorporated. And lastly, a camera at the base of the stock. So yes, the overall concept's the same. The overall execution is entirely different. This new 2020 Ram has these great looking cab lights and I'm sure they're LED and very fancy and they come from the factory. And it was possible to get cab lights from the factory on this truck as well, but mine did not have it, which means my friends and I had to pull the headliner down and drill holes to put these lights in. But the great thing about a truck like this is everything in there is so simple, that job took us less than an hour. This truck is a Laramie trim, just like the 2020 Ram, and that means it actually came with a surprising amount of power options, including power locks, which don't work. This is the key in the new Ram 2500, and believe it or not, both of these trucks are Laramie trims, and like Case said, you get a surprising amount of power options in the new truck, just a heck of a lot more of them. So to get into the new truck, to unlock it, just put your hand behind the door handle and pull out, and now you are greeted by a power folding step. The best thing about the interior in this 1994 Ram is it's everything you need and nothing you don't. If you look here, you've got climate controls, you've got yourself a terrible old cassette player with four paper cup speakers, you've got an ashtray because it was the 90s, you've got cup holders, two of them. You've even got a little power outlet there in addition to the cigarette lighter, again, because it was the 90s. And it's comfortable, it's a nice place to sit. I can go through every gear on this truck without lifting my elbow from the center console. And this brings up another great point because a manual transmission is something that you cannot expect on any fifth gen Ram. It's actually surprisingly engaging to drive. When you come on to boost and reach for your next gear, it's a surprisingly satisfying feeling. The level of control you get and the semi-truck feeling that you get when you're shifting gears in something with a diesel engine like this is actually pretty hard to match. So the interior on the new Laramie is quite different than the interior on that old Laramie. And when I say quite different, I mean there's pretty much nothing that's even remotely similar. This new one is covered in leather and suede and fine stitching across the dashboard. It's full of crazy amounts of technology. This is basically equivalent to like a Cadillac from 1994 in terms of comfort. Now at this point, Case is going to be talking about how his truck is basic and it's more fun to drive than modern trucks. That's great, but every day this truck is so much better than that old Cummins. It's quieter, it's a lot safer, um, I can plug my phone into about a thousand different places, and even as like a contractor for example, it's great having a huge bed, but you still got to write up estimates and this has a power outlet for your computer and a lot of place to put it and cooled seats to keep you nice and cool on those hot days. So yes, even though these new trucks have gotten very soft and luxurious, they can still do the work when they need to. And speaking of work, these modern 2500s, even in gas form, will tow upwards of 13, 14,000 pounds. And that old 2500, even with the diesel, was probably rated at what, under 10, eight or 9,000 pounds? It's, it's hard to find the exact number, but somewhere in that area. One thing that is nice on this Ram is that it actually has cruise control and that works. And when the cruise control is active, 
This accelerate button basically becomes your gas pedal, and I mean that literally because when you press this, the actual gas pedal moves forward. The steering wheel on the new truck is leather bound and it feels really high quality. On the right side of the steering wheel you have your cruise control, except this truck also has adaptive cruise control so it'll stay the same length behind the vehicle in front of you. You have on the left side of the steering wheel voice recognition, phone controls, and then radio controls. And even the middle of the steering wheel is different because these trucks nowadays aren't known as Dodge Rams, they're known as just Rams as part of their own brand. Checking out the climate setup in more detail. Well, it couldn't be any simpler. If you want it to be cold, it gets cold. If you want it to be hot, it gets hot. Here's your AC, here's fresh air, and this is where you decide where the air actually goes. The brains of this Ram 2500 are controlled by this massive 12 inch display. It takes up the majority of the center of the dashboard and this is where everything lives, such as your climate controls. Now you do have manual buttons here on the left for both the driver and the passenger, but there's even a climate control page where you can adjust the airflow. You've got these little sliders which allow you to raise and lower the automatic climate control. You can of course turn on your research, and if that wasn't enough, you also have a whole suite of seat and steering wheel controls. So you have ventilated seats, heated seats, and even a heated steering wheel in a separate menu. Down here by the shifter, you'll find an old school control for four low and four high. This is how they did it back in the day. To gauge four-wheel drive in the new truck, it's as simple as pushing one of three buttons. Well, actually four. You've got a button for two-wheel drive, a button for four high, and a button for four-wheel drive low, and a little tiny button if you want to put the transfer case in neutral. And then on the steering wheel, you actually have buttons which are for the gear limit if you're towing a big trailer down a steep hill and you want to lock the truck in like third gear. You might be thinking that a two-door truck is impractical because you can only bring two people, but you can actually bring three. Center of the Ram is very configurable. It's actually pretty cool how it works. First of all, the cup holders and this big storage tray can slide forward and backward if you've got a really large item. Of course, this lifts open for a small cubby with a USB. You even have a large center storage area, but check this out. You've got different conversion charts here on the underside of this lid. You've got a protractor. You even have trigonometry ratios if you wanna throw back to junior year in high school and the Pythagorean theorem if you're trying to calculate uh, a triangle. And I don't know, it's just funny stuff like that which, which is pretty entertaining. And back here you've got two more cup holders with a space for an iPad. Case, does your truck tell you how to calculate the cosine of a triangle? No, it doesn't, but while you've been in here talking about how great the 2020 Ram is, I used a pocket knife to pull my broken power lock switch, and if I had another one of these cheap bits, I could just fix it. Case, that's cool and all, but go ahead and reassemble the switch panel. Okay. All right, I'm I'll sure it'll, it'll be quick, right? Yep, definitely, if I put it in the right way. Now is that completely reassembled? No, and you're not supposed to be able to pull that off without pulling the door card, but that's just how it is. Yeah, and here's the thing about some of these old Dodge trucks is that while it's easy, look, look at this, while it's easy to pull apart, like nothing is really all that well screwed together to begin with. The advantage of the crew cab, of course, is that you can seat five in extreme comfort. I'm six foot one inch tall, tons of room in the rear seat, probably not a big surprise, but take a look at this. I even have under seat storage, which I can lift up. I've got some there. I can also lift up these little dividers so I can have some additional thoughtful areas to keep things from sliding around. It's, it's pretty well thought out, actually. I'm, uh, I'm really impressed with that. And they even incorporate an LED light on the underside of the seat, just so you're not working blind at night. Though both of these trucks are Laramie trims, this is optioned as a diesel, and this 2020 Ram is optioned as a gas engine. And both of these were available from the factory with both gas and diesel options, but one difference between the generations of these trucks is that this 12-valve Cummins has almost no electronics on it at all. It has an electric starter, obviously, to get it running, and it has an electric fuel shutoff to make it stop running. 
Other than that, the fuel pump is mechanical and gear driven off of the crankshaft. The camshaft is gear driven. Everything in here is as simple and robust as can be, which means that it's easy to work on and there's not a lot of stuff to go wrong. But that also means it's not very refined because all the electronics attached to this gas motor make the entire experience very seamless and very connected, but that means you basically need a tech degree in order to change an air filter on this truck, and that's just because it's covered in all kinds of sensors, wiring harnesses, relays, things I can't even name. What Case conveniently forgot to tell you is that even though these old engines were basic, they also produced far less power than the new ones. In stock configuration, this truck made 175 horsepower, 420 pound-feet of torque. That torque number sounds pretty good until you look at the 2020 truck because this gas V8 makes 410 horsepower and 429 pound-feet of torque. And then if you step up to the low output diesel in these Ram HDs, that makes 850 pound-feet of torque. And if you get the high output, over 1,000 pound-feet of torque. So yes, I do appreciate the old one is simple, it's very tunable, but the new one from the box with the warranty makes a lot more power. And what Tommy has conveniently neglected to tell you guys is that this Gasser 2500 Ram, even with its chin spoiler that improves its aerodynamics, is getting around about 14, 15 miles per gallon. Whereas my 1994 Ram, believe it or not, and I've calculated this tank after tank, is getting around 20 miles per gallon. Not bad. The suspension on the old 94 Ram is pretty basic. You've got solid axles front and back. You've got coil springs in the front, but leaf springs in the rear. The new Ram also uses solid axles front and back. It also has coil springs in the front, but in the rear, a very different setup because this one has an optional air suspension system with some of the biggest airbags I've seen on any non-commercial vehicle in my entire life. Even though the hood sits so much taller on the new Ram than the old Ram, it has about 14 inches of clearance under this side step. Let's see how much it is on the old truck. Well, under the door, it's 21. I'm amazed that the tape measure is even long enough to measure that far. Actually, to be honest, if you look underneath, there's this plate down here, and realistically, the low point is about 13 and a half, so it's right about the same. Though these are both Ram 2500 Laramies, they're two very different trucks for two very different kinds of people because as cool and simple and DIY as the 94 Ram can be, it's a little antisocial. It sounds and smells like a school bus even from 100 yards away. This new Ram is a lot more refined, a lot more comfortable, but it costs a lot more. So let's toss to Tommy and figure out exactly how much more that costs because I paid eight grand for my truck. Yeah, it's more than eight grand. This, this truck you see behind me has an MSRP of about $71,000. Now, let's compare that to what the old one was when this truck was new back in 94, an MSRP of about $18,200 for a four-wheel drive with the diesel. That's equivalent to like $32,000 today. So, trucks have gotten significantly more expensive over the years. They've also gotten a lot more luxurious, a lot more refined, a lot more capable. But let me know in the comment section below, which one would you rather have? The good old school, basic, easy to fix truck or the modern, comfortable, capable technology in the new truck? Thank you so much for watching this video here on TFL Classics and check out tfltruck.com for the latest and greatest in new versus old truck reviews.